Investors are worried about financial market stress due to a sudden drop in bank reserves held by the Federal Reserve. This coincides with an anticipated shortage of U.S. Treasury bills as the government reaches its debt ceiling limit. The Fed's quantitative tightening program has caused the reserves to decline because it requires banks to keep a balance at the central bank, and this has sparked concerns about the impact on financial stability. Customers are searching for better places to put their money, which causes bank deposits to decrease. This downward trend in reserves affects the economy in many ways, and analysts claim that fewer reserves restrict banks from lending money to support company expansion and growth, which causes problems for their balance sheets. That's why today, let's talk about the recent bank crisis in America that could collapse more than 187 banks in the country. Hey there folks, before we dive in, don't forget to smash the like button and hit the subscribe button for Tech Revolution. And let's begin. First of all, the pandemic caused the Fed to buy securities under its Quantitative Tightening or QT program, which increased its balance sheet and reserves at the central bank. Now they're reversing that with QT to take that stimulus out of the financial system. Fed data from March 8 shows that bank reserves average around $2.999 trillion, which is a $1.3 trillion decrease from its peak of $4.3 trillion in December 2021. The director of Roofer in London, Matt Smith, stated that the banking system is now less prepared to deal with a liquidity crisis in markets due to the withdrawal of $1.3 trillion in liquidity in just five years during the last QT cycle. This means that if there were to be a sudden shock, the banks would not have enough reserves to handle the situation effectively. Now, I'm sure you've heard about SVB Financial Group. They're a startup-focused lender that collapsed on March 10, and people are worried it might affect the rest of the financial sector. This isn't the first time the Fed has tried to reduce its balance sheet through QT. The last time they tried it, in September 2019, the banks didn't have enough reserves to keep the short-term funding markets functioning properly. This led to higher repo rates and forced the Fed to inject more reserves into the banking system. The United States is expected to run out of bills due to hitting the debt ceiling, which means the Treasury has to stop borrowing. This shortage of bills will also decrease reserves. In February, the U.S. government almost reached its $31.4 trillion debt limit and the Treasury warned that it might be unable to prevent default after early June. According to John Villis, an FX and macro strategist at BNY Mellon in New York, if the Treasury can't issue bills due to the debt ceiling, more cash will go into reverse repos, further bringing down reserves. This situation has raised concerns about its impact on the broader financial sector, especially for startup-focused lenders. In September 2019, the Fed attempted QT, but it was cut short because the bank reserves fell below the required minimum for the short-term funding markets to work properly. This caused repo rates to skyrocket, which made the Fed step in and provided extra reserves to the banking system. According to analysts, instead of depositing their cash in banks, investors have been putting their money into reverse repos or money market funds that offer access to these repos. In a reverse repo, market players lend money to the Fed at a 4.55% rate and in return receive treasuries that they promise to buy back. This has led to volumes on reverse repos skyrocketing to over $2 trillion since June last year, despite bank reserves decreasing. The average savings rate is only around 0.2% per year, and despite the increase in the Fed funds rate due to multiple Fed hikes, deposit rates have not followed suit. Experts believe this is because individuals over-deposited money during the QE period due to the government's stimulus during the pandemic and because of the low deposit rates, there has been a decrease in deposits, with the second quarter of last year showing a decline in bank assets and liabilities, according to Fed data. In a research note, Joseph Abate, the managing director at Barclays, mentioned that having extra deposits gives banks the upper hand in deciding deposit rates and their competitiveness in securing funding. 
and the recent story of SVB Financial demonstrates how the withdrawal of deposits can harm smaller banks. Furthermore, California's banking regulators took action and closed down Silicon Valley Bank on March 10 due to a surge in deposit withdrawals. The bank faced multiple challenges, including a drop in deposits from startup companies struggling financially. Julie Solar, a credit officer at Fitch Credit Policy Group, explained that banks that have strong liquidity and funding profiles are better equipped to handle a drop in deposits. However, banks that rely on non-core funding have high concentrations of deposits or large unrealized losses in their securities portfolios and may face greater challenges in this situation. The movement of money from deposits, reverse repos, and bank reserves are connected. People are investing in money market funds that invest in reverse repos. This causes the use of reverse repos to increase, which reduces the number of reserves. However, even though the current level of reserves is lower than before, it's still higher than in 2019. This happened because many people withdrew their money for tax payments. However, experts say that the market is not in a panic just yet. Rufer Smith thinks that the minimum reserve level required by the Fed might be higher than the last economic cycle due to the substantial growth in the Fed's balance sheet through the massive QE program. He also added that all balance sheets have grown, so it's unclear where the tipping point is. Furthermore, research suggests that 186 banks in the United States are at risk of failing, just like Silicon Valley Bank. According to a recent study on the Social Science Research Network, about 186 banks in the U.S. are in danger of going under, and it's because of the increase in interest rates and the significant number of uninsured deposits. The study estimated the loss of value of individual banks' assets as a result of the Federal Reserve's rate hike. Assets such as treasury notes and mortgage loans can decrease in value when newer bonds have higher interest. The research also examined the proportion of funding banks receive from uninsured depositors with accounts worth over $250,000. The research also suggests that if 50% of the depositors without insurance pulled out their money from the 186 banks, even those with insurance may face losses as the banks won't have sufficient assets to compensate all depositors. And this could lead to the FDIC intervening. Nonetheless, it's crucial to remember that the study doesn't consider hedging, which could safeguard numerous banks against surging interest rates. In addition, the research warns that if even half of the uninsured depositors choose to withdraw, almost 190 banks may risk affecting insured depositors, with up to $300 billion of insured deposits in danger. This risk increases if small fire sales occur due to uninsured deposit withdrawals, putting more banks at risk. For instance, Silicon Valley's bank's failure highlights the danger posed by rising interest rates and uninsured deposits. The bank couldn't meet its obligations to depositors after customers withdrew their uninsured deposits due to asset value loss caused by rate increases. The economists behind the study caution that these 186 banks could meet a similar fate unless the government steps in or they're recapitalized. These findings emphasize the need for banks to manage risk carefully and diversify their funding sources to ensure stability amid market fluctuations. Meanwhile, President Joe Biden has clarified that he won't let the crisis be resolved using taxpayer money. The White House is going all out to prevent ordinary Americans from feeling like they're once again being asked to bail out two banks in a way just like the 2008 financial crisis. In a statement jointly issued by the Treasury, Fed, and FDIC, they stressed that the taxpayer would not be left holding the bag for any losses related to the resolution of Silicon Valley Bank. In addition, the Federal Reserve is giving banks money to pay their customers, supported by $25 billion from taxpayers. The Fed is confident that they won't need to use the money because they have collateral in the form of safe securities. Some economists believe that the government's support will benefit the bank's customers, even if taxpayers aren't directly responsible, and Republicans in Congress are concerned that smaller banks and their customers will pay for the program. 
So how do you feel about what's happening to America's financial system? And what do you plan to do with your deposits? Share your thoughts with us in the comments section below. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching till the end. Before you go, make sure to like and subscribe and click the notification bell to trigger YouTube's algorithm and see more of our videos on your homepage. Thanks for watching and see you next time for more interesting videos like this.